Hi, we're starting chapter 99.2, which is about modeling with formulas and functions. You might be wonder why, wondering why I'm bouncing this little baby. It's not actually a baby, it's a doll. All my babies are grown or more grown now. But I'm pretty sure about one thing is that everyone who's attending this class was a baby at one point. I mean, I'm not a biologist or anything. But babies often like being bounced to help com them calm down. So the question today is, can you write a mathematical description of how we're bouncing the baby right now? You could pause the video and write down maybe a graph, draw a graph of how we're bouncing the baby. Okay. And by the way, here's a free parenting tip for me. Not every baby likes bouncing up and down. Some babies like swaying back and forth. Some babies like this kind of motion. Some babies like this kind of motion. So if you ever have a baby who isn't calmed by bouncing up and down, Got to try all the different axes of rotation and motion. Okay, we're going to put this pretend baby down and switch to uh, paper and pencil now. Okay, there's a good chance you drew a graph something like this. Probably had time on this axis, zero to, I don't know, maybe two seconds. You probably had um, the baby's position. On this axis, uh, maybe measured in centimeters above the floor. Um, I was uh, sitting down, so it's not like it was a whole 180 centimeters or whatever. So it was probably, I don't know, 115. And the baby was moving up and down and up and down and up and down. And was the baby moving up and down very much? like? 50 centimeters each time? No, it was probably only less than a centimeter actually. Um, so from this center line to the peak was, let's call it 0.8 centimeters. And from center line to the valley was also 0.8 centimeters. So uh, at this point we've modeled it with a function because drawing a graph like this is describing a function. We haven't used a formula yet um, but this is a perfectly good function we can draw. So what went into making a graph like this? Um, there's a bunch of, well, let's call it six steps. Um, step one is just choosing what your two variables are and which one is going to be the horizontal variable and which one is going to be the vertical variable. Um, so choosing your variables and which is the horizontal variable and which is the vertical variable because that can make a big difference in the kind of formulas you end up uh, deciding on. Um, step two is uh, deciding on units. Uh, you probably noticed I didn't choose kilometers here for my position. I didn't choose years for, for the time. Um, Um, so we usually just use whatever units kind of feel like they have the right size for the problem. Um, uh, let's see. Step three is uh, drawing a picture by hand. Um, and step four kind of goes along with that. You can mostly do these in either order is uh, choosing your X and Y window. I mean, like where your axis starts and where it stops, where your axis starts and where it stops. Um, if that's really 0.8 centimeters and this is 115, then this isn't, isn't starting at zero. Uh, it's starting more at like 110 or something. Because um, if we really went 0 to 115, then a 0.8 centimeter wiggle up and down would be basically invisible. Just so small. Um, and then um, I'd say step 5, which we haven't done here, is um, opening Desmos or some other kind of thing. Um, and setting its x and y window to match what you decided on intuitively here, or at least to include it. So 
sometimes it's nice if the x and y window includes the origin even if uh, if your Desmos X and Y window includes the origin, even if your graph doesn't include the origin, like this one doesn't, um, because usually the formulas you start out with are near the origin and you need to kind of see them and move them to where you want them to be. And then step six, we actually play with formulas to try to get a formula that match, matches the graph we, we drew. Um, So step one there would be choose a basic shape. Do you want a linear function, quadratic, um, exponential, that kind of stuff? Um, step two, uh, apply some parameters to shift it, scale it, all kinds of stuff. Um, And some of those parameters we apply, we choose based on theoretical decisions, and we can be very precise about them. And other parameters we just kind of have to play with. Um, So you just try stuff until it looks good. So um, doing all this modeling with functions and, and formulas, um, uh, as one big assignment, it takes a lot. Uh, and if you um, make some choices here that get in the way down here, then that really makes life hard. So I'm breaking the homework into two parts. The first part, is one through four where it's all by hand you basically don't need a computer at all um, and then parts five and six that's when we're trying to come up with actual formulas to match the drawings we had so you'll see a description of the part one part two distinction in the homework file all right, um, since we're talking about uh, formulas and functions and stuff, let's make a list of our favorite functions and uh, what they look like. That'll be on the next video.